Okay, so here's what happened uh, within the next uh, few days after I uh, uh, spent the time off in uh, Hidalgo and then where was it? McAllen, Texas, Far Texas, and I fixed my truck, right? That's the last time I give you guys uh, an update. Uh, but I was driving in this area. This is uh, the southern Texas, right? I was from here, right here near the border. So I had to take this, uh, what is it, 281? Yeah, 281 North, and I had to dead head to Houston. So I'm taking 281 North, and then there's uh, 44 East, and then you gotta catch 77, Highway 77. That's near, uh, uh, not too far from this Corpus Christi, right? I think it's called uh, Revere, Revere, uh, Texas. And this 44 was like a very big turn. I have to go left or north on 77 that would take me to Houston right and I stop at the and and then the sign that says trucks stay in the in this lane in the outside lane so for the wide turn okay and that's what I usually do because of the trailer right you don't want to go on the narrow on the inside lane when there's two lanes available so I stay in that lane just follow the sign and I have my, see this is my hands free, hands free uh, handset, headset, and here's my phone, right? And I stop at the light, and I'm parked, pretty much waiting for the green, and I answer my phone, like this, with my hand, because my, uh, my headset was not connected to the phone. And I'm waiting for the light, uh, you know, to turn green, and then from the corner of my eye I see some movement and uh, past the right window so I turn my head and that this uh, a very attractive girl just goes like this you know? and I'm kind, of, I, I'm kind of used to that reaction but uh, you know normally because you know I'm a handsome devil right so I see girls you know go crazy all the time but normally they just you know their knees go weak and they just fall right and I look at this girl and this is a strong one you know she keeps waving and uh, okay I understand calm down right I know um, but what do you do you know when you when you're handsome <laughs> and you cause that reaction you kind of get used to you know and then I look at her and she kind of looks strange you know like she's attractive but she dressed in this uh, like the getup you know it's all kind of one color it looks very cheap you know all green and I'm look and I'm thinking she's Amish right but then I look closer because she keeps waving at me, you know, like, I don't know what, what's her story. I know, I know she's excited, so I'm excited, but, you know, I gotta go. I gotta pick up alone in Houston. But then I see that, yeah, okay, she looks Amish, like, by her clothes, but she has no, like, nothing on her head. Like, no kerchief, you know, like, Amish people, they always cover their, like, women, they cover their, the hair with something. So that doesn't fit in. And then, right behind her, there's a big SUV, black SUV with some strange letters on it and uh, I know that Amish people they don't drive SUVs they only drive uh, those big cargo type vans and they only go to the nearest McDonald's or or Panda Express or McChicken because they're not supposed to use any machinery so I'm thinking this girl is definitely not not Amish and so she keeps waving but now her gestures are more of a, like a kind of like a signal code she shows like this you know okay i guess she she wants my phone number or something okay so i was supposed to go left you know but i don't want to make the girl all upset so so i turn right and i park and i see that she uh, gets into the suv and uh, and she drives after me but then she stops and nothing's happening and i see she's talking in some gadget looks like kind of like a CB radio so definitely not Amish and then I see that she starts walking and uh, I lower the right window and actually now I see that because she was far away now I see that that green it's not like a dress it's kind of like a jacket and pants and she's wearing army boots and she has a gun on her on her hip you know because it doesn't fit in you know I uh, I know my dad was in the military so I, I deeply respect the army you know but 
to cause such a, re a reaction with the uh, army army attractive girl you know so I'm curious so I grab my pen I'm ready to write down my phone number but she comes to the window I don't see any paper like you know where am I supposed to write it and she smiles at me and she says go over there to the scale and she says you know why I stop you why I stopped you I say I'm attractive and she says no you were talking on the phone go over there <laughs> they're waiting for you <laughs> and it turns out there's a scale like inspection station uh, and it's a uh, not just a regular inspection station it's Texas DOT inspection station and of course that's what this girl was you know she was a DOT inspector but they wear this you know the police in Texas they wear black and white uniforms and their cars are black and white but uh, DOT or motor vehicle enforcement I don't know what the correct term is but they deal with uh, truckers right and probably commercial buses too they have this green uniform which kind of like uh, customs in Texas uh, kind of like army army you know and you can mix them up and sometimes you know you can get this kind of like what's happening you know like anyway so I go through the scale and of course they write me a bunch of tickets you know because it's a uh, old truck they find some uh, they have a pit they put me over the tip one guy is under the truck another guy is writing down what's that guy from the under the truck is shouting oh engine leak transmission leak power steering leak and they give me a ticket for the cell phone and I say wait a second I wasn't even oh on the ticket and the ticket looks like uh, and the ticket looks like this take this off <laughs> a very big ticket and on the ticket it says uh, using a handheld mobile phone while operating a CMV right hand right ear so you even have to write that one down while operating a commercial motor vehicle and I ask him I said guys you know I think like a court will throw this out like operating I was she was parked that attractive girl that I thought was Amish at first she was parked parked next to the intersection I was parked or I had my foot on the brake waiting for the for the green light so I was not technically the vehicle was not moving and she says no if you're on the public roadway uh, it's considered uh, you're operating the vehicle even if you stopped if you pull to the shoulder you can uh, receive and make phone calls which to me does not make any sense because uh, shoulder as any any uh, construction guy knows a shoulder is a part of the roadway that's what the highway consists of it consists of the pavement and shoulders right so why is it that uh, I can make phone call on the shoulder I cannot make a phone call when I'm stopped on the pavement in front of the in front of the street light but anyway so that's how you uh, can meet uh, interesting women in Texas so just remember that uh, highway 44 uh, kind of like a big intersection with 77 that's where you can meet them. and now I've been I went to a petrol truck stop uh, where was I after I got loaded spent like six hours you know tarping they wanted it's some kind of like a pipe fittings on skids very heavy load like 45,000 pounds you know I'm like 79.9 thousand pounds so now I gotta keep uh, one tank empty to be legal and I am legal and I, I now of course uh, Landstar what they do is they take your truck off the system and until you fix all your problems on the truck and I send them an explanation saying that I was under the impression that you know you know you can use a handheld phone uh, when you stopped and they say oh no y y that would be incorrect okay but now I got a load to deliver, right? So, but they told me not. I cannot pick up another load until I fix the, the truck. So I go to this uh, petrol. Uh, yeah, I think it was petrol petrol truck stop uh, somewhere there. Uh, this is right now. I'm in Effingham, Illinois. Basically heading to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And I go to the petrol, and the guy says, "No, we cannot fix that uh, engine leak." 
because that's your head gasket and we cannot fix the transmission because that's your bell housing gasket you know I have no idea what he's talking about but I know that it doesn't sound uh, cheap and he says oh but we can fix your uh, power steering leak because it turns out it was just a rubber thing on top of the like where the lid is there's supposed to be a rubber and there was no rubber there was just uh, silicone and it was uh, just leaking when the truck is moving you know that liquid is moving and it was uh, just seeping through the lid you know so no, no big deal nothing uh, nothing too hazardous so he cleaned it up okay one thing is done oh and then they found my uh, backup light like on the, on the back frame of the truck there's a white light that's supposed to light up when you put your gear in reverse and the light is okay the bulb is okay but the light does not want to come on and this guy Petro says oh there's a switch on the transmission that uh, that's the wire from that light is connected to he says that switch is bad so he says when you're gonna be doing your work on the transmission and let him fix that because then it'll be uh, cheaper than uh, me doing it and plus they don't want like doing these expensive repairs anyway and so I call this uh, you know I call this uh, shop in Michigan that uh, did some work on my truck before I know those guys like charge only what 80 bucks an hour 85 bucks an hour which is pretty cheap uh, compared to Canada and the guy says oh head gasket Jesus he says you have to give us one week notice and your truck will be down for one week and it's about uh, anyway it's like five grand just for labor and he says when we open the engine because they have to dismantle the entire engine to just to replace that gasket like a, a rubber thing right or what is it made of maybe metal but he says how many miles does your truck have and I say 800,000 miles and he says well chances are when we open the engine there'll be something else like usually at least like cylinder linings or I said how much is that he says well one lining is nine hundred dollars just the part <laughs> and I'm thinking oh boy and here I was ready to buy buy a, a trailer and that's what can happen when you have a truck you know like on the truck nothing is cheap right I said okay how about the uh, transmission can we fix that uh, for less than five thousand dollars he says oh okay he says transmission to replace the rubber they have to take out the entire transmission they have to take out the clutch so whoever came up with that design was probably working either for the Russian Mafia or or the uh, had a share was a big shareholder in one of these uh, shops because they cannot just open part of the uh, you know transmission and put the new rubber take the old one out put the new rubber in no 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 you have to dismantle the transmission and the clutch and then take them apart and of course that's required because now they can bill for like 20 hours of labor but that's what this guy said yeah it's going to be he said about two thousand dollars <laughs> to <laughs> to replace that stupid gasket in the transmission so and then i wanted to add the axle three grand for the part uh three for labor uh, five maybe three for ties and the rims and I wanted to paint the truck for three grand, put a big bumper for one thousand, put a sun visor, add the stack, new stacks for one thousand dollars, and I'm now of course I'm thinking, wait a second, that's something is wrong with that plan. So I call a dealer in Cambridge. I say, hey, I need a new truck. <laughs> and the guy, of course, is excited to hear from me because uh, now it's uh, what May 2014 right in a few months they'll be getting 2015 model trucks so naturally they have a couple of uh, 2014 trucks sitting in the, in the lot and uh, right now what's by, by the way what's what's good about this situation is that I sold my flatbed right and this truck was listed as uh, security on that flatbed so I was not able to sell the truck until before but now it's my truck my property you know but i know last year they only offered me ten thousand like volvo was the best uh dealer that offered me ten thousand uh, dollars trade in for this truck so i'm calling this uh secret for now dealer uh that sells a secret brand of trucks but i was kind of you know i kind of like them and um 
And I said, okay, so what do you what do you think uh, in trading value? He says, well, send me a VIN number, send me some pictures. So I sent him some masterfully done pictures uh, done with my Nikon with that new lens. It really looks good. That you know that uh, shot I showed you in the previous video, like a big close up of my truck. And I think that impressed him. But he says me he sends me a message and he says, uh, so what do you think your truck is worth? I said, wait a second. I'm asking I ask you first you give me a number right and I'm thinking he's just gonna tell me like five grand you know uh, and basically I insist on him giving me the answer and he starts talking to his wholesaler because of course they're not gonna give you a retail value they're gonna give you a wholesale value like he's selling he buys this truck and he, he sells it to the wholesaler so if your wholesaler quotes him let's say five thousand bucks so he'll give me three let's just say right because he wants to make extra money and then sell it to the wholesaler so basically it's like it's a ripoff but uh, you only get like an auction kind of price you know like very low and but these guys are desperate you know they don't sell uh, those uh, brand new expensive hundred thirty thousand dollar truck or hundred forty thousand dollar trucks they don't sell like hot cakes right so they're gonna move some merchandise. They're gonna move 2014 uh, model year truck. So they call me back and the guy says, we're gonna give you, he says, okay, considering your new tires, like on the front one, one month old, on the back uh, 10 months old, and that's like three grand, 1,000 here, you know, and then I just did the clutch, so did air conditioning, right? So the truck is relatively in a good shape. Uh, apart from this, from these, uh, you know, leaks and plus, uh, those DOT inspectors, they're not mechanics, right? They see a leak, like I talked to a few guys, they had the same, uh, you know, kind of like warning, written warning, and they say, you know, one guy just got the same thing, like leak, and he goes to a shop, and the shop says, hey, that's normal, because there's a blow by hose that takes that, where well, there's too much pressure, and the oil goes down that hose, and it goes to the ground. That's how it's done. So, of course, when you're driving, there's wind, and all that oil goes on, you know, on the bottom of your engine. So, you know, they're not mechanics, DOT guys, they just write up things and it's up to you to get a professional opinion. So this is still a great truck, pulls great, amazing. Uh, and so this guy says, well, I'm sorry, but we can only give you $9,000. I said, what? That's amazing because last year when this truck had 700,000 miles, uh, Western, Western Star in Air Ontario offered me 7,000 and I almost beat them up and then Volvo said 10 and I told Western Star about this and Western Star one month later called me back and said okay we'll give you 10 if you uh, take uh, one of our if you buy a Western Star so to get an offer of 9,000 one year later with the truck that has 800,000 miles on it that's pretty good and this guy himself, he understands, he says, yeah, we're giving you a bit more money that your truck is probably worth because uh, we have uh, like only two trucks, uh, 2014 year left, and we want you to buy them. You know, we want you to buy a truck uh, from us. So that's why they're giving me, giving me a, a good deal. And this truck, I'm going to see it on Wednesday. And we're still keeping the brand uh, secret for now. I'll let you guys do your, uh, you know, guessing. But this one has 14,000 front axle, 46 rear tandems, right? And it's aerodynamic, and it has 18-speed tranny, and it's a small engine, but it makes 1850 torque. You know, what's not to like? And they give me the price, uh, you know, pretty competitive, 129,000 bucks, Canadian. So that's pretty good. And I'm getting some cash. If I buy this truck, Landstar will give me a couple of grand uh, cash through the dealer. It's kind of like uh, you can use it down towards the down payment. You can use it. Uh, they can give you a card, like a credit card or debit card. You can use for repairs. But on a new truck, you know what repairs? So of course it's expensive. So now I have to put on hold my uh, trailer plans. But these guys uh, said that uh, uh, he's gonna send me a picture. Uh, someone else used the same truck and they installed the lift axle there's still space behind because this one is just a three axle truck right now and I want to get the fourth axle for the future and they said 
other guys did it and so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get uh, by that lift axle from US here for what was it uh, for a few thousand dollars and I want to and if I buy the truck I'll make it part of a sale saying that you guys install it but I'm not gonna put on wheels or tires I'm just gonna put the axle on let them finish it and give me the truck like that and then when I'm ready for a low boy trailer I'll just add tires and rims you know and this way I can I can start you know trucking with uh, heavy loads but for now I don't know I have two guys that are willing to buy the step deck so I'm kind of at the in, in very interesting junction you know or I can sell the truck and just get out of trucking but then what, what I'm gonna do become a paparazzo I don't think I, I'm uh, yet uh, very good at that you know but um, so we're gonna get a new truck and there are gonna be no repairs for the two three years I'm gonna save a bunch on taxes on personal income tax because I can write off 30% of the value of the truck even during the first year and then 30% of whatever is remaining and it's gonna be very good on fuel because it's a smaller engine uh, more efficient transmission you know aerodynamic truck everything is nice and round and I can still install a fourth axle and it's a heavy haul truck hey you know so that's a quick update but for now yeah I'm just shutting down uh, shut down here in uh, uh, FNM Illinois here's a view through the windshield yeah, it's been raining, raining here recently you will see it over here okay where's where's the what is this I don't understand what I'm, what I'm seeing in the in the ah oh, okay Jesus the, the angle on this thing is amazing <laughs> I was trying to show the the sign TA over there yeah so that's where I'm parked uh, at the TA, so I'm gonna go grab some Starbucks coffee, check out the Walmart, and I'm gonna post this movie uh, using the Wi Fi at the, the TA. And then uh, today is uh, Friday, so I'm gonna take it slow because Monday is uh, Victoria Day in Canada, and I'm going to Canada across the just across the bridge from Michigan, so I'm not gonna make it there. Like today is the last working day, right? So some kind of a pipe plant so I'm probably gonna deliver Tuesday and since I cannot do repairs or I don't want to do repairs and spend like ten thousand dollars on a truck that's you know ten years old um, but you know I feel kind of sad about the truck because this is my first truck and I got it in uh, in uh, April 2007 with 165,000 miles it was kind of like it looked like brand new and it was the same yellow ugly color but I did so much work on it right I, I changed the horsepower extra ratios tires like I spent lots of money on it and that's actually that's what happens when you buy uh, someone else's truck and then you start customizing it for yourself so this truck that I'm I want to buy it already has everything that I want in a new truck right then specifically heavy axles and 18-speed transmission the only thing that's missing is the lift axle but for now I don't I don't even have a low boy trailer so but uh, this was a you know a good truck but I spent lots of money during the first couple of years so then uh, it did not give me too much headaches uh, you know I can still outpull all these Peterbilt's and Kenworth trucks, you know, if I go with the heavy load, especially now when I have this uh, diesel freight dial over there. So 90 horsepower extra or 250 pounds of torque extra, I can get in a top position, like position 10. So yeah, it's been a good truck, so... Uh, oh, and plus, plus right now I'm spending probably about at least like thousand bucks a month, you know, with no payments. I'm still spending uh, on average. Sometimes can be two thousand a month. Sometimes can be just two hundred. But on average, like a thousand bucks, I'm spending on repairs. Something breaks. You either need new tires, new shocks. You know, 
the last thing was uh, what air conditioning see 750 right and then to fix that uh, power steering thing they charged me hundred eighty dollars <laughs> because there was labor so you know a new truck at least a couple of years you, you don't have any headaches and then I'll just replace it get a new one because now they're gonna be some uh, some value in it that I can trade in because I will give them big uh, down payment well, what? Not exactly, but what? Ten percent. But now we have a new truck, so less headaches. So, so the next video will be one of the next two videos will be showing you the new truck. So, well, of course, to get that, I, I gotta get approved by a financial company. So, but that should not be a problem since uh, they already have like nine grand from this truck. So, but we'll see that's what's happening but I started talking about women and that's why this video is called how to meet women in Texas uh, but basically stay away from highways 44 and 77 near Corpus Christi <laughs> thanks for watching